Hello and welcome to round... We're filming over this one, this camera, come on. Hello and welcome back to another round of the... Pe we just agreed to use this camera. Over here, come on. Stick to what we know. Hello and welcome to round eight of the Pecking Order Show, a show about Australian football and everything's run through the, the lens of the TPO rankings. You can think of it like the FIFA World rankings, but for Australian football clubs. And as always, I'm joined by Jake on Skype. Jake, how are you this evening? Excellent, Cody. Thank you. How are you? Yep. Doing well, thank you. Thanks for asking. Yes, I got in cool. trouble when I didn't last time. So. Yep, it's very polite of you this, this <laughs> week in round eight. So... All right, let's, let's jump in. Um, so this week we'll be talking all about the TPO rankings, um, how the games over the weekend just gone have had an impact on some of the, the rankings, the teams and where they're situated. And then this week we look forward to a huge round. So we've actually got like 16 games for you guys. So we'll be voting on 16 different games on Instagram stories. So if you're watching this, um, it's probably Wednesday, Thursday or Friday. Friday, if, if it's Friday, it might be too late, but if it's Wednesday or Thursday, stop what you're doing right now, Go head over to Instagram and follow us, TPO Rankings, and get voting, because basically, guys, we're 8-7, we're you guys are 8, we're 7, you, so you're beating us in the um, overall leaderboard, um, so 16 games, a lot of games, a lot of points up for grabs this week, and that's what this week's show is all about. Before we get into previewing all 16 games, uh, we're going to do a quick recap of the game's that we previewed the week before. So the first game I had picked was Magpies Crusaders and note Jake, I'm not saying the full name this week. <laughs> so Magpies versus Cairns, which was um, postponed due to sort of some sort of weather, some sort of tornado or, or cyclone. <laughs> cyclone, I think is the appropriate term. Um, warning, so that was gone. We'll jump on right into the next one, which was Devonport City versus Hobart Zebras. Now this game was the only one where you guys, as TPO supporters, voted differently. To us, you guys backed Hobart Zebras, who in fact won, uh, two won. So you got a point there, guys. Um, and Devonport City, so with that loss, dropped four spots to 87th from 83rd down to 87th. Hobart Zebras up five, so jumped from 81st to 76th. Jake, what were your games? Uh, the first one I had was in the A-League, so Western Sydney, Brisbane Raw, um, and obviously living in Brisbane, Brisbane Raw fan, this is not the result that we wanted to see. Um, Western Sydney got up 3-0, and obviously this two, you know, second last game of the season there was a, a pretty important one for um, deciding who um, will make the, the semi-finals, the finals. Um, we, being TPO, predicted the, a Brisbane Raw win, and so did the supporters, so we were, we were both wrong on that one. Um, and as a result of that, the Wanderers up two spots to fifth, uh, and they're now the favourites to make the finals with uh, one game to go, which we'll, we I think we touch on um, in our games coming mm -hmm. up this week. And Brisbane Raw down two spots to seventh, so um, not not good from a Brisbane Raw point of view, but Wanderers will be happy with that one. Um, and I think the next one uh, was mine as well, Cody. I'm, I might yep. be jumping ac across here, but over to South Australia and the MPL, we had Adelaide City and Metro Stars. So the two teams predicted to finish first and second over there. Um, and we had an Adelaide City um, favourite or prediction to, to win that one. Uh, I think they were about 49% chance of winning. Uh, and the supporters backed us as well and, and picked Adelaide City. And this is, you'll, you'll notice a theme of um, the recap this week, we were wrong. <laughs> so yeah. Metro Stars won that one 2 0, and with that, they are um, the favourites now uh, in our simulations to win the MPL in, in South Australia. Still a long way to go. And on the rankings, Adelaide City drop um, some points but remained in 15th in the country. Metro Stars closed that gap, and they're now up to 17th. So those two clubs, the, the highest ranked clubs in South Australia outside the A League. Yeah. So um, yeah, a, a pretty important win for Metro Stars. And I think you had one more game? I did, yeah. So over to Western Australia with um, the Division 1, or the, the second tier in Western Australia kicking off. Uh, I went for DNLR White Eagles against Western Knights. Um, and I didn't realise this when I picked it, but apparently it's, it is a bit of a derby, local derby there. Um, and we had Western Knights as the favourites in this one and predicted to finish first. Dianella predicted to finish second in that league. Mm -hmm. uh, and the supporters 
um, backed us as well and, and went Western Knights. And like I said, we were wrong. Uh, Dean Heller got up 6 0, so it was a wow. bit of a whitewash on that one. Um, so, result of that one, Dianella up two spots and they're now in ranked 108th. Uh, and on top of the loss to Dianella, Western, um, Western Knights also lost their FFA Cup game through the week um, and they're down 19 places. So, they're now ranked 99th. Right. So, they had a huge fall away in the last week. Yeah, okay. So, basically, out of. Uh... Out of four games, we got the TPO rankings got zero right, and um, the supporters have just got the one right. So they did better than us, but still not a great showing. As I mentioned before, that uh, TPO supporters, you guys are on eight, um, and TPO rankings, us, we're on uh, we're on seven. So you're ahead by one, but this week gives us plenty of opportunity to to catch up, and if not, overtake. So, but before we get into those games, Jake, are there any other results or? Um, movements in the rankings that you'd like to point out? Yeah, there's a couple, um, all towards, or most of them towards the top of the table. So we've got Bentley Greens from Victoria have now moved um, up the rankings. They were already ranked above Central Coast Mariners. Um, uh, on the back of their result, just gone on the weekend, and Wellington Phoenix dropping points in their loss. Uh, Bentley Greens have now gone ahead of the Phoenix as well. So Bentley Greens are now ranked 10th out of all the clubs in Australia, ahead of two A-League clubs. Um, and the other one is Apia Leichhardt from New South Wales. So they've moved above the Mariners now as well, up into 13th spot. So Central Coast Mariners keep losing and keep falling down the TPO rankings. So they're now down to 14th, and there are four different MPL clubs all ranked higher than them at the moment. Uh, hmm. In the top 25 as well, Edgeworth Eagles from northern New South Wales have climbed back up there after they had a yep. win um, over the, I think it was the Newcastle Jets youth team. Um, and falling out of the top 25 was Rockdale City Suns from New South Wales. Um, what else? We had Bayswater City um, from Western Australia, the, the highest ranked club over in, um, in Perth or over on the, the West Coast. Uh, they're pushing very close to the top 25. So they, Western Australia hasn't had a club in the top 25 for a while now. So they're up to 28th and you know, another couple of wins and we could see them kind of push into that, push that gap anyway. Yep. Uh, just... On the, the West Coast still, ECU Joondalup, um, uh, they've, I guess I'll put them down just a quick mention because they've absolutely shot up the rankings. So they're, in terms of picking up points, they're from, they've gone up from 67th to 53rd um, and that just in the last seven days and that's um, on the back of two wins against Inglewood United. So the same team, they beat them in the FFA Cup and then they beat them again in the league. So um, ECU Joondalup as well, for those following on some of the socials I'm, I've mentioned um, the the clubs who have got the longest unbeaten streak in the country. So Issy Jundalup are uh, one of the clubs up close to the top there with um, eight or nine, I think it is now. And talking about that longest unbeaten run, right now in the country, um, or going into the weekend, it was Cooks Hill United from North New South Wales. The second division there was unbeaten in 10 games, which was the highest in, in Australia at that point. Um, and they had a loss, so the mantle that the I guess, trophy for longest unbeaten run in the country is now passed on to Peninsula Power and Olympic FC in Queensland who are both unbeaten in 10 games so pretty impressive we'll see how long that lasts fantastic cool well um, let's move on to the next segment of this show uh, which yeah as I mentioned earlier guys is previewing a heck of a lot of games and remember to get your votes on because that's what it's all about this week so Jake, let's run through this reasonably quick because I believe we've got 16 games in total. Um, let's just shoot on through. So I'm going to start in the Queensland MPL where we've got Brisbane City host to Brisbane Olympic. Um, it's a, always a big fixture up in Brisbane. Um, it promises to be a fantastic game. Olympic, as you mentioned, just now we're a flying high at the moment. City really needs to start picking up some points if they want to be amongst the finals contention come end of the season. Olympic ranked in at 31st. Brisbane City ranked in at 56th. Olympic, obviously, quite heavy favourites um, leading into that one. All right, so one game out of the way. I'm going to continue on because I've got another game from the Queensland MPL, the top tier in Queensland, and that's the Southwest Queensland Thunder, the team based out of Toowoomba, versus Moreton Bay Jets. So I picked this one because Moreton Bay are, um, are very much favourites, 78.9% probability of winning this. But an away trip to Toowoomba is, 
is never an easy one. And um, Moreton Bay haven't been in the best form lately. They, they beat Sunny Coast Fire 3-1 on the weekend, but um, from what I heard, they weren't that convincing. Um, such a huge difference in, 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 in the rankings, but I wouldn't be surprised if Southwest Queensland done the manager pick up a point. All three from this game. Jake, FQPL, the second division in Queensland. Let's get going. All right, so the first one that I have here is Holland Park Hawks versus Wolves. Uh, Wolves FC. So um, this one's pretty much on the list because I'm trying to tempt the supporters here to vote against us. So the probabilities, TPO probabilities, have um, Holland Park as the favourites, so 55% chance of winning versus Wolves 25%. Um, Holland Park ranked 141st, Wolves 168th. So Holland Park the favourites. But if you look at form, um, Holland Park have struggled. Um, particularly the last probably month or, or at least few weeks. So they started the season really well, picked up three wins in their first four games um, and a draw in there as well, and then haven't picked up a single point since and, and have actually copped a few big defeats, including in the FFA Cup against a, a team from uh, the Brisbane Premier League, so the division below. I think it was 7-1, um, something like that. Mm. So Holland Park are struggling. Um, on the other hand, Wolves started very slow, didn't pick up any points at all for about the first four or five rounds uh, and have, in the last few weeks, won two of their last three games. So, like I said, this is one of those ones where the numbers say that Holland, or the rankings say Holland Park are the favourites. I wouldn't be surprised if Wolves can, can get up and, based on form, might be favourites. So let's, cool. let's see if the supporters think so as well. Um, and then also in the FQPL in Queensland, I've got South United and Sunshine Coast War Wanderers. Um, and same reasons before, this one's uh, an interesting one, but I'm, I'm putting the, uh, the challenge out to see if, if the supporters will go against us on this one because South United are favourites, um, ranked a little bit higher and are at home. Um, and 39.4% favourites, I think it is. Sunshine Coast, 38.3%. So South's favourites. Sunshine Coast Wanderers, though, are predicted to get the promotion spot um, up to the MPL, one of them, and are currently second, second on the ladder, whereas South's are down in um, predict, predicted to finish sixth. So, look, based on how the season's going so far, you'd have to say Sunny Coast Wanderers are, are probably favourites um, if, you, if you weren't looking at these probabilities. So, we'll, again, we'll see what uh, the supporters think. Okay, great. That's four games down. Now over to Western Australian MPL. Bayswater versus Perth Soccer Club. Two teams uh, in the WA predicted, predicted sorry, to finish first and second. Bayswater ranked 28th, uh, Perth 30th. Very close. Uh, Bayswater slight favourites heading into this one. Really looking forward to it. Next game in Western Australia in the same competition, Subiaco versus Sterling Lions. Both teams coming off wins on the weekend. Uh, predicted to finish sort of mid to low end of the table. Sterling Lions, slight favourites away from home. Um, they're ranked 91st, whereas Subiaco are uh, 109th. And I'm just going to leave it there. Jake, what's your game? Uh, same competition, WA MPL. I've got the Perth Glory Youth Team uh, versus Sorrento. Um, and it feels like one of those games where the rankings are still possibly catching up a little bit. Uh, Sorrento are, are favourites, uh, ranked at 59th at the moment, and the Glory Youth Team are uh, ranked 98th, um, but the, the Glory Youth team are looking strong so far and they've picked up some good wins against some of the, the good clubs or top clubs um, in that league. So, um, And I had a quick look earlier on and they've actually scored a lot of goals as well for, for where they are on the table, but look, Sorrento are right behind them in terms of wins so far this season uh, and they're predicted to make the top four. So, yeah, as I say, on paper or on TPO paper, Sorrento mm -hmm. favourites, but... Uh, yeah, that's some pretty be... pretty good paper, though, isn't it? That TPO oh, paper. You should see it. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, interesting game. Cool. All right, on to the A League, and I believe there's only one game that we've picked from the A League, and that's uh, I've picked this game. It's Perth Glory versus Brisbane Raw. You know, six spot is up for grabs, and it's really it's it's Western Sydney Wanderers to lose. If they get a win, they've got it. They're in the finals. But if they slip up, one of these two teams, um, the winner of this game may very well, well, will sneak in. Uh, Perth at home are slight favourites, 41.9% uh, probability of the win. Let's move on to Northern New South Wales. Jake, what's the, what game have you picked from here? Um, I've picked what looked to me like a pretty obvious one. Even if we were looking at the top two or three games, I would have picked this one. So it's Broadmeadow Magic and Charlestown City Blues. 
Um, Broadmeadow Meadow Magic, uh, one of the top teams from the previous few seasons. So it's, you know, we talked about them in the previous weeks as well. But one of the clubs that we haven't talked about is Charlestown. Um, and Charlestown City have won four from four this season, including a, a win against Landon Jaffers, so one of the, the other top teams. So, um, again, it's one of those ones where the, the rankings might be a bit slow to catch up. Broadmeadow ranked 40th. Charlestown City Blues ranked 88th. Um, so Broadmeadow at home are, are clear favourites uh, from the TPO rankings point of view. But Charlestown City have the form. Um, Broadmeadow, I think, have only picked up one win out of four. So, wow. yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether uh, Charlestown City can, can knock off another one of those top clubs and, and kind of solidify themselves as one of, one of the title contenders. I don't know if we're doing ourselves much of a service. We're picking these games where where really the, the favourites uh, look to be beaten. So <laughs> maybe we should stop doing that. Um, my, I picked most of my games based on, or well, the criteria was I wanted something where we were probably going to be wrong to tempt the supporters. Yeah. And oh, a bit of fun. we turn out to be right. <laughs> yeah, it's all a bit of fun. So, all right, on to the next competition, which is the New South Wales NPL. Um, I've got two games here. So Sydney Olympic versus Blacktown City. What a big game this one is. Blacktown drew one all with Manly United on the weekend. Olympic, Sydney Olympic beat Marconi 2-0 away from home. Um, Olympic equal top of the table and one point actually above Blacktown. Blacktown, however, are favourites away from home um, in this game due to being you know such a high ranking. They're 12th on the rankings. Sydney Olympic, though, are 22nd. Um, that's all I really got about to say about that one. Um, and I'll move on to the next one, which is uh, another big game from that competition. There's so that that competition's really interesting at the moment. There's a we might touch on that in another week or two, but there's a lot of teams up and around the top um, six, which um, it's going to make for a really interesting season. Already is, of course. Anyway, enough talking. Uh, my next game is Sydney United versus Wollongong Wolves. So Wolves are in some really good form at the moment. Climbing up the rankings, um, Sydney United likewise, and are sitting just sort of behind APL, Leichhardt, Blacktown, City, Heidelberg and Bentley Greens and Adelaide City as the best sort of teams um, outside the A-League in the country. They both had good wins on the weekends. Sydney United 3-0 away from home to Sutherland Sharks and Wolves 2-1 away from home to Hakoa. So Sydney United are our favourites at home. But I don't know, I just think Wolves are in some good form, so we'll see what happens now. Jake... The next game we've got here is yours, and it's in the New South Wales NPL 2. Yep, so I've gone down a, a league, uh, and I've got Blacktown Spartans versus Canterbury Bankstown. Um, and I'll admit, I don't know a lot about these clubs um, being based in Queensland. Um, so, look, I'm, I'm kind of picking it because it looks close on paper based on the, the TPO rankings, and I'm hoping to throw a bit of curveball at supporters that, like me, aren't um, based in New South Wales and, and might, might not know a lot about these, these two clubs. So... Um, Spartans are slight favourites being at home, um, but they the two clubs are basically identical on the, the TPO rankings at the moment. So Spartans ranked 122nd, Canterbury 123rd. Um, they're predicted to finish 11th and 12th, 12th uh, respectively, so they're, they're both going to be fighting around that relegation zone. So um, that's, I guess, what, like I said, why I've picked it right down near the bottom. It's, it's an important game, even though it's early in the season. And, and look, I'm just interested to see for, for those that might know a little bit more than me, uh, you know, what, what they think will happen. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so on to the ACT. Now, this is one of my, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. So, Monaro Panthers versus Canberra FC. Um, I've left this one, it was one of my last games, as uh, Monaro are my new favourite team. You know, they're ranked right near the bottom of the pile at 188th, but got up against the highest ranked team in the competition down there, Canberra Olympic on the weekend, who were ranked, who were 47th. Um, such a big difference in the rankings. Um, and Man- that was the second round of the competition. Monaro had a buy in the first round. So they're one from one, they're 100%. Um, and I'm, I'm backing them to continue their underdog status this weekend with a game against another good team, um, Canberra FC, who are ranked 102 spots above them in the rankings and are huge favourites to win. But I'm backing, I mean, the, the system's backing Canberra FC, 80.5% probability, but secretly I'm backing Monaro Panthers all the way. They're, like I said, they're my new favourite team. Jake, you've also picked a, a game from this competition. I have, and I've got to say, Cody, if I was out there watching you, you'd have me sold. I'd be with you. <laughs> <laughs> Good salesman. Um, mine, like I say, is uh, another one of those where on, 
on uh, probabilities, it's an obvious win, and that's Western, or oh, sorry, Woden Western versus Canberra Olympic um, again in the ACT. So uh, Canberra Olympic, like we said, heavy favourites, high ranked club in ACT at the moment, despite having that that loss to Monaro last week. Um, but I guess uh, looking at Woden Western, they they're actually ranked slightly higher than what Monaro were, but they're 179th, so not by not by a lot. Mm. Um, but look, if if I looked at just what we've got on the screen now, there you'd, you'd say it's a it's a no brainer. But if you look at what's happened so far in that league, um, Canberra Olympic have played the one game and lost. Woden Western, despite being 179th, have played two games and won, um, and both of those were against clubs ranked quite higher than them. So. Um, I reckon this could be the pick for upset of the week, and, and I'm going to dare the supporters to vote against DPO on this one. I, I reckon Wade and Weston could continue on with uh, with their recent form. Awesome. Well, we've got two games to go. They're both yours, Jake. Let's um let's keep this snappy Victorian NPL. All right. So I've got Port Melbourne Sharks and Dandenong Thunder. Um, looks to be a, a pretty close game. Um, we've got Port Melbourne ranked 51st, Dandenong Thunder 45th. Um, Port Melbourne obviously at home, but Dandenong are the very slight favourites in this one. Port Melbourne have actually started the season a little stronger. Um, I think they're on five points, um, so slight one or two points ahead of Dandenong. And at home, they'll probably back themselves. But look, it's early in the season. I think this will be one of those ones where uh, too early to tell, but if we look back in a, in a couple of months' time, it might be pretty important come uh, relegation battle time. So... Uh, yeah, Dandenong Thunder slight favourites, but could go either way. Cool. And, and the very last game, 16th game, what is it, Jake? Yep. So this one is in the Victorian MPL 2. Um, and for those, just a bit of context, for those that don't know, um, the MPL 2 in Victoria is split into East and West leagues. Um, and the clubs in the East play each other a number, twice, I think it is, and then in the West they play each other twice. But then they have a, a, a round every now and then where they actually play across the two leagues. So... Um, this is one of those ones where we've got clubs from separate leagues actually playing each other. So I've got Altona Magic, Altona, Altona, um, versus Box Hill United. Um, and I think this is one where I might be actually throwing the supporters a, an opportunity to, to get it right against um, what we think. So Altona Magic has started um, the season ranked very low because they, they've come up from the league below it. Um, but they're sitting equal second in the MPL2 West League at the moment. Box Hill, on the other hand, are sitting in seventh in the MPL2 East League. Um, but because they have a higher rankings, they're still the favourites in this one. So hmm. Altona Magic are climbing up the rankings, but aren't quite there yet. Um, and look, those that are based in Victoria will probably know more about this than we do and, and probably have an opinion on whether the East is a stronger league than the West or the other way. Um, so I'll be interested, interested to see the result of this one, but also just how people vote. So um, hmm. I'll admit if I was sitting out there, and, and look, I'll probably vote anyway, um, I'll probably be voting for Altona Magic on this one. All right, cool. Well, there you go, guys. 16 games. So many games. Um, lots to look forward to this this weekend. Um, remember to follow us on Instagram. It's the only way you can vote in this. It's TPO Rankings. Get on there, on the Instagram stories, get voting. I'll start posting on Wednesday across Thursday. So... You need to be there. Jake, before we head off, anything anything else? Uh, I have one more, Cody. Um, for those watching uh, at home, you might have noticed Cody and I uh, have matching wardrobes tonight with our shirt with a little logo on there, the pecking order. Um, but I'm going to throw it out for anybody that's watching um, who plays for a club, coaches, is involved in any way that actually sells their jerseys. Um, hit us up on one of our socials, and, and if I like the jersey and, and it's available for sale, I'd, I'd love to buy if something like from jersey. an MPL club yeah. and uh, get. I mean, we've got nothing in the background. It's if pretty Jake's boring over here. <laughs> gives it the tick of approval. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're wearing the same. He'll thing. do you the honour. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, exactly. Cool. But yep, hit me up somewhere, and, and I'd be happy to happy to have a look. Yeah, and that that is. We want to start getting you know the background with different jerseys, putting on different Australian foot ball memorabilia so guys anything like that um if, if you've got anything le left over you wouldn't mind in the background chuck it our way we'll pay for postage we'll pay for whatever um yeah we certainly want to get our wardrobe a little bit um varied in the background as background shots as well so all a bit of fun anyway um okay so that's it for for week round eight of the pecking order show um now next week guys we've got a huge job in recapping these 16 games uh, that we've picked out but we're also going to be looking at um, the clubs, 
proving the TPO rankings wrong in 2018 so far. So do not miss that. Jake, thank you very much for joining Thanks, us tonight. Thanks, It was fun. Got, really. Yeah, absolutely. It was fun. So guys, see you out there on the socials. See you later. Bye.